Hello, friends. It's L4C Daniel here with uh, Living for Christ, a ministry of Turner Street Baptist Church here in Maryville, Tennessee. I'm here with Pastor Timothy Townsend, and we welcome you to the L4C, uh, L4C Show, episode number two. Now, in our last episode, we talked about who we are and why we started this podcast. We talked about the things we are facing in this world and our country. We talked about how we should stand up as children of God in the midst of evil. And we ended our show with how Jesus is the solution to the problems we face in this dying and lost world we live in. Now tonight we will be discussing a touchy subject that false teachers have used to cause division amongst the body of Christ, which shouldn't be a touchy uh, or offensive at all. Because the Bible is very clear about this, but we are going to talk about women preachers. Now, the question is, what does the Bible say about women preachers? Listen, folks, it doesn't matter what anyone says, but it matters what the Word of God says. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, Pastor, I feel that's the biggest problem when we are dealing with issues concerning truth, doctrine, or questions some may have concerning what's right or wrong in the eyes of God, is that men and women seek the wisdom of men rather than seeking the God of the Scriptures. How do you feel about this, brother? How do I feel about women preachers? How do you how do you feel about that men and women seek the wisdom of men rather than seeking oh, the God of the Scriptures? Yeah. Yeah, um... <laughs> Well, the Bible's very clear that we're not to follow the philosophies of men. Of course, the philosophy of man is uh, foolishness compared to the wisdom of God. Um, our, our authority of faith and practices always should be the Word of God. And I always think of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is proper for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, and instruction in righteousness. Ultimately, it's what thus saith the Lord is, not what man man thinks or what man says. Amen. Um, so those of you who are listening, uh, we honestly encourage you to pray about this. And you may be confused concerning this issue because many are, but we hope this episode will truly help you to see what God has said in his word. Um, so if you have a Bible with you, I encourage you. Uh, to turn to First Timothy chapter three verse one. If you don't, um, you can just listen as I read here. Okay, so for, uh, First Timothy chapter three verse one says, "This is a true saying: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work." Verse two says, "A bishop then must be blameless." Now listen here. Watch this: the husband of one wife. Diligent, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. The biggest thing, Pastor, here that pops out to me is, is the husband of one wife. If Paul, who, uh, Paul, who was writing this letter to Timothy and addressing this situation concerning the office of a bishop, if this was directed in very, if this was important, I'm sorry, if this was important. Um, concerning women preachers, don't why would um, Paul say um, the husband of one wife? I mean, if 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 a woman preacher, if it was permitted by God for a woman to preach, don't you think that Paul would signify to Timothy um, that a woman could preach here? Why would he just say a husband of one wife? Yeah, you see what I, I'm saying. I mean, that always stood out to me too. A, a woman can't be the husband of one wife unless they're involved in the sin of sodomy. And, of course, the Bible is very clear about that sin. Um, and, of course, marriage is between a man and a, and a woman. I mean, God created Adam and Eve. And like somebody said many years ago, he made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. But uh, the, the verse, though, that sticks out to me there is verse 1 where it says, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, it's a man right. that desires that office. And it says, he desireth a good work. That pronoun is very important, he. So uh, I think it's very clear there. I don't see why there's any room for any discussion. You either believe the word of God or you don't. And I know some people like to, to use the argument that uh, this was written in a different time and for different people. 
But if you go with that reasoning, you're going to go down a, a pathway that will lead you away from what God wants for your life. I mean, you could use that excuse and say, well, it was back in those days they were against sodomy, so now we should accept it today. Right, or so it would be okay now, yeah, right? It's okay now because it's accepted in this society. You could say, well, they, people didn't used to live together without being married, and, and it was called fornication back then, but now it's the custom of the day. It's not that. See, you start making excuses for things. You just have to let the Word of God stand and let men just uh, men are just going to have to believe it. Well, see, God's not the author of confusion either. It's not like God is out to confuse us and, and, and try to uh, cause uh, doubts or, or issues within his word. No, that's why he's given us the Holy Ghost to help us, to, to teach us what he has said. And um, if that's the case, like you were saying, well, because it used to be this way, well, then if that's the case... If God, I believe that God would address that situation within His Word. Yeah, He never does. Right, basically. and He never does. It's it's that way because it's always meant to be that way. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, oh, and another, I think it, people excuse it this way. Also, they say, "Well, Paul wasn't a misogynist. Uh, that that means he was against women, and that's that's utterly ridiculous." Also, I mean, if he was that. Uh, how can you trust him on anything else? I mean, you're going to say he was a misogynist, and we shouldn't believe what he said about. Uh, Women preachers, well, uh, he might just uh, not what he, know what he's talking about also when it comes to salvation in Romans chapter 10. And we have to take this guy's being the word of God and speaking on behalf of God. I mean, in, in uh, Galatians chapter 1 and 2, he pretty much says that what he says is given to him by revelation from God. It's been revealed in him to give to us. Yeah, it's funny you say that because most people... <clears throat> You know, Paul never liked to defend himself, period. And they can say whatever they want to about Paul, but Paul, every time that he would address himself, it was always a servant or a bond servant oh, yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ or this or that. He he never addressed himself of lifting himself. He always lifted the Savior before himself constantly. Right. And the only reason why Paul ever had to defend himself because it was absolutely necessary to get, mainly as you see in Galatians, he defended himself for the sake of the Galatians, because he needed them to understand that yeah. his calling was sure, that it wasn't it wasn't something that was just... He realized you know, they needed to have confidence in him. And so to build that confidence, he had to defend himself. He didn't do it to puff himself up. Right, yeah, because Paul never took pleasure in that. So like, I was just adding to like when you were saying that they look at him this way, or I yeah. guess you could say a hater of women, that's foolishness because uh, you can just go through many of the epistles... And, and that's what I'm getting to is is that that it's God speaking through Paul. It's God. So when you when you look if the, those who say that well Paul was just this or that, well then they're really directing that towards God because yeah. the, the the word of God is inspired, and God through the power of the Holy Spirit was pinning this down through men. Yeah. So I mean, so if you're looking directly to the scriptures itself, if you 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 can say what you want to say about Paul behind the pen. Maybe who he was behind when he wasn't, you know, when he wasn't pinning the scriptures down. But when it came to the scriptures itself, he's speaking on behalf of God. He's speaking on behalf it's of all God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. That means it's God breathed. Uh, another interesting thing, also speaking of the Epistle of Romans, how did Paul get the Book of Romans to Rome? He used a lady named Phoebe. I mean, so and I mean, you, Lydia was with him oftentimes. He he saw the value of women in the ministry, and women are very valuable in the ministry. And see, but that's the thing. That's exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to make it look like that God is a woman hater, and he looks down upon women, and he want and he wants to make it look like that men who love the Lord, who were godly men, want to make them look like that they are putting down women as if they're nothing or they're not, you know, uh, uh, caught up with men to serve in the ministry and so forth. But that's just a lie. That's just a lie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and God used women in a great way in the Bible also. I mean, he used Esther to save the nation of Israel. But he didn't call Esther to preach behind the pulpit like he did Nehemiah. Uh, God uses women uh, in a great way. Lois and Eunice were commended by the Apostle Paul for having a great influence upon young Timothy in the way he turned out. Uh, godly women in the Bible have been used in a great way, and they're being used greatly in churches today in their proper place. Um, 
I think about Daisy Hall. She's the Sunday school teacher that led Lee Robertson to the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord for, for that. If it wasn't for Daisy Hall's being faithful, we wouldn't have Lee Robertson preaching the gospel to all those he preached to. So God has a, a certain order to things. You know, I think the problem, too, is, is most of this stuff is coming from a world's view. I mean, any uh, Christian who's been uh, saved and bought and born again by the blood of Jesus Christ and um, who is growing in Christ and, and walking in obedience with the Lord um, understands. And, and most women, they understand because they have that relationship with the Lord. But a lot of this outlook is coming from Satan. It's coming from the world view. And then that's what happens is the world view comes in and sneaks in within the church. And then you have um, some women and some men who uh, may be babes in Christ who uh, allow the world view to, um, to take over. And they take over that mindset. You yeah, know what I mean? And a lot of them I just, I kind of, well, I, I despise virtue signaling. And I think a lot of it has to do with that. I mean, we're, we're grown up now and we're more mature now than things were in biblical times. We know better. But let the word God let, let the word God be true and men be liars. But that's the thing is too, Pastor. That's what we want though. Uh is we when we get into wor- the word of God, I know I want the word of God to cut me. I want it to dive deep because ultimately I want to be conformed to the image of his son. But I, I want to be made more and more to be like Christ. And, you know, uh, when you get into God's word, I mean, God starts to reveal uh, who you are and the uh, and how much you truly need him. You know what I mean? And you begin to see um, your fallen state and how much you need him. But that that's what I want. That's what we should all want as believers in Christ is we want God's word to get deep in us and cut us so that we can be made more into the image of his son. And the more that happens, the more power that you receive from the Holy Spirit to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus and overcoming sin and 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 just living the life that He is that He wants us to live. Yeah, so. and I think mostly what we covered is the, what men what men believe about this and what women believe about this that are uh, what women preachers believe about uh, things. But what the Bible teaches is very clear. It all goes back to the curse in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, This is God talking to the woman. He says, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And then uh, there's a verse that's closely tied to this over in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, that says, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but be in silence. And it gives the two reasons. It says, Adam was first formed, and then Eve. And then it goes on to saying, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So God said it's in this order, and this is why it's in this order. It's not that a woman can't preach well. It's just that they're not directed to and not allowed to. Uh, I'd imagine there's probably some women that can preach better than some of the men I've met that are preachers. Uh, But they're not allowed to by the scriptures. Uh, There's a limit. There's an order to things. Right. When you were saying those things, it made me think of um, Titus chapter chapter 2, verse 3. And concerning on, you know, how important the role of a woman is. Um, It says uh, in Titus chapter 2, verse 3, it says, The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the, listen here, that the word of God be not blaspheme. So they, as as we see in Titus, the aged women, there's a huge role right oh, there yeah. alone. I mean, I, I think you know, as my wife being uh, being young, and uh, 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 and as a young minister myself, is that my wife looks. You know, you know, people are always looking at us. You know what I mean? And I believe that my wife looks to. Um, the pastor's wife and other aged women as as of guidance 
And that's why, you know, and we don't understand sometimes just how far just that alone goes is when women decide just as us men to put on the armor of God and to be what God has called you to be. Stand in the role that he's called you to be. The role. That's what I was getting at. Don't yeah. You don't try to go over what the Lord's asked you to do. Um, interesting too there. It says be submissive to your own husbands. It's not saying that a woman is any less than a man. It just has a divine order there. The husband is the head of the wife. It's Christ is the head of the church. Be submissive to your own husbands. Uh, Daniel's wife doesn't have to be submissive to me as a, as a man. Now in church, I, I am the leader of this church. Now, so far as that, she she does, but um, it's not putting the woman down in a lower rank is what I'm saying. It's just putting things in the order he wants them to be in. That's why it says in one place, I wish I had the reference, let all things be done decently and in order. We need to get things back in order. Well, pastors, you know as much as I know, and these these uh, these days that we're living in, Women are definitely, um, and this goes for men too, but uh, for the sake of the con, uh, the topic of our show is, is women. Women are definitely um, not the same women that we could say we see uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago, maybe even 30 years ago, especially within the church. I mean, there's a lot of churches that will say, okay, well, come as you are. And women are coming there dressing just completely immodest and uh, causing uh, causing the brethren to fall and to look upon them with lust. And uh, it, it's just so prevalent. And women are just not the same. Women are becoming so dominant over the men. And it's the Satan movement of feminism as well. And it, and it comes from anything. One, I mean, it comes from, sorry, not anything. It comes from the world itself. But... The problem is, is I expect these things from the world, those who are lost, but I don't expect this from the children of God. I don't. So. I tell you, another reason for that is weak men. I mean, men just need to be the men, and men of men of are not just they're not taking the responsibility, of not being the man of the house. But they're, well, they're afraid to man, hurt their wife too. Kids too, right? I mean. Well, they're not leading, and, and, and here's another yeah, thing: you is see the destruction of that role too. Even if you watch right. a sitcom, they make the husband look like an idiot. Right. Well, also, it's hard, you know. In, in some instances, some women who truly want to be submissive unto their husbands, and let's say I don't want to say truly want to, or I guess I could say that, but truly want to, and who truly are, it makes it hard for the woman to be submissive unto a husband who doesn't know how to leave and has subjection in, in his own home. Right, you know what I mean. Have his home, uh, uh, have his ch- children and his and his wife uh, uh, submissive. You know what I mean, and all on the same page. Yeah, you know, how God sees it fit. You something know? you always have to clarify when you talk about the submissiveness is the way a husband is supposed to lead. A husband doesn't lead his wife like a like a master leads a slave. Uh, the husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. One that loves someone doesn't treat them poorly or like a second-class citizen. A husband should consult his wife before he makes decisions, but the ultimate decision comes with the head of the household, which is the husband. And the Word tells us to be gentle with she our wives as well. Submissive. Yes, and, and Christ, that's the way Christ leads us. And Christ is a servant. When he came, he came as a servant as well. Yeah. And that's how we should, it, the best word to, to sum it all, sacrificial love yeah. towards your wife. And, and everybody's <laughs> probably already heard the illustration that... Uh, God took Eve from the side of Adam and not from the head so he could think he was smarter or from the foot that he could walk all over, but from the side so she could be with him and complete him and be the help meet that she ought to be and he ought to be. And right, it's a beautiful thing. And I love how you said, you know, that us as husbands to love our cry, uh, love our wives, sorry, as Christ loved the church. So you're not going to act like she's horrible. You're not going to try to put her down all the time and... You know, you're going to talk to her and you're going to make her a part of your decisions, but the decisions ultimately come down to the head, which is the husband. Um, one more thing about women preachers. I guess we're about to wrap up. Yes. We're going to go to a song break and then we're going to come back. Yes. Okay, let's just go to the song break then. All right, so we're going to go to a song break here, folks, and then we're going to be right back with you.
Amen. You know, I really like that hymn, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. You know, that's true, Pastor. Because He Lives, We Can Face Tomorrow. You know, His grace is sufficient. And I, I want everyone to know, listening, that His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. His grace is enough. His grace is enough to get through any trial, any tribulation, anything that you go through in this life for the cause of Christ, uh, any battle that you go through that Satan tries to throw at your door. Or it may be God allowing you to suffer something, to mold you, to grow you, to make you more like His Son. His grace is sufficient. It's enough, always. So, uh, folks, we're going to kind of wrap this up here. Um, I guess, Pastor, I just wanted to add that um, I think when it comes to women preachers, would you go ahead and name them all as false prophets? I mean, I don't see how you wouldn't say that they're false prophets. I mean, I believe that they're all false prophets. So, I mean, how do you how do you feel about that? And I've not really thought much about it, but they're right. definitely denying the, the scriptures. I mean, those scriptures are pretty blatantly clear. And one thing we didn't even mention was when Jesus went to pick 12 disciples, how many uh, women preachers did he pick in those 12? Zero. Zero. Uh, that tells us a lot. I mean, that was kind of the origin of the church was the 12 disciples. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure some of them have some of it right, maybe the gospel message right, but you're not taking the whole counsel of the Word, right. word of God. I mean, you're you're pulling that part out to fit what you want to do. And right. I guess the reason why I say that every woman behind a pulpit that proclaims himself the office of a bishop and says that they are a pastor over a flock, the reason why I call them a false prophet is because if they have – um, I guess, work themselves up to believing that they've been called by God definitely means that they have had to read through those scriptures. Yeah, right. they've denied them. So, right, so exa- exactly. So that what I'm saying is is there could be a woman out there that maybe she, she got saved, born again, and um, maybe she felt like, oh, I'm called for that. But then she reads the scriptures and God shows her, yeah. and you know she turns away from that idea because she's a child of God and she knows it's wrong. But... Like I said, these women who are behind the pulpit, they've had to look at these scriptures. And like you said, they the only, fully deny that. And if they can deny that, what else would they deny? The only provision I can make for and it doesn't justify it, is that they went to a church that kind of walked over it for them and kind of explained it off. And, and they trusted somebody that they interpreted the scriptures for them and led them in that direction. But there's no doubt it's wrong. And, uh, right. There's but no I mean, as story. as the thing is, is even though they did that, though they they ha- like if, they're, if they're truly born again, they have the Spirit of God yeah. working in them. So there has to come a certain point where I mean, God has to be working in them to showing them and convicting them that this is not right. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, could this happen too? I mean, say somebody trusted Christ as their Savior, like like we knocked on the door, led somebody to Christ, and they moved. We lost track of them, and then all of a sudden they find themselves in a charismatic church that teaches them they can lose their salvation. And somebody starts leading them into believing the Word of God wrongly. But they're still saved because we want them the Lord and they trusted the Christ themselves. But somebody along the way kind of beguiled them or tricked them. It's kind of like the church in Galatia. Paul taught them right. And then some of these Judaizers come in and start twisting the Scriptures. Right. And see, they were still so, saved and Paul had to come so in maybe this and really convince them. And the uh, they say, well, you could be a preacher. Well, this scripture says this. Well, it doesn't really mean that. It, it, I mean, there's a lot of deceivers gone out in the world. And somebody, I guess, could be a victim and be deceived and think they're something they're not. And the problem is, is you know what? And, and, and here's another thing. Let's just say if, which it's not, let's just say if, if a woman, if God did permit a woman to be a pastor, okay, which which we know that's not true. But if it were so, at the end of the day, when we identify false uh, false preachers as well and false prophets, we identify by the message as well, what they're by preaching, their fruits, yeah. by their fruits, and by the fruit of their uh, and by their message. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and, and all false prophets, you know what I mean, are going to come with a false gospel, a false right. message. They may even talk about the death and burial and resurrection, but when it gets down to it, there's going to be somewhere in the midst of the message that's going to corrupt the gospel. Whether it's losing your salvation, whether it's this or whether it's that, there's going to be something in there. And this is the funny thing. All of these mainstream TBN, women preachers, Joyce Meyer, and you name it, they all preach 
a false message, period. And so they can say what they want. You know what? If they want to argue at the, uh, which I know we, I know not because I'm trying to be prideful here. I'm just, I, I, it's just because what God's word says, and it's what saith the Lord. There it is. But but at the end of the day, if they want to argue with us or argue with you uh, that no, this is what it really says, and they want to you know take away from God's word and do what they want, then it says fine. But your message is still corrupt. Exactly. You can, yeah, right. So you can say that you're called by God to be a pastor behind the pulpit, and we know that's a lie from hell itself. But you can say that all day, but your message is still corrupt. Right. And so that's what we're seeing from these women preachers in in mainstream. They're they're that's all high on feminism. It's all about uh, uh, disobeying your husbands, and uh, that you you know. <clears throat> You're, you you can be as high. You know, this is what really bothers me, Pastor. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of getting upset. But this is really bothering me. If you look in the scriptures, that when you say a woman is called, when a woman uh, or they say women are called to be preachers, it really just kind of disregards all the other scriptures and about the woman put, be subjected to the husband. And you're putting a contradiction in the scriptures. Exactly. God's not going to call somebody he knows is wrong and somebody's so disobedient to what his word says. Right. So, I, yeah, there's no such thing as a woman preacher. Right. And I'm see, and if that, and if that offends somebody, that. it just offends somebody. God's that. word no should God offend us. called women preachers. Right. Well, God's word should offend us, right? I want, the thing is, I love my son, right? And I, and, and even though if I tell him the truth, I know it's going to hurt him because maybe he just doesn't understand. Or maybe he does understand, but he just, he knows he's doing wrong and, he just doesn't want to be exposed of what he's doing. But if I love him, I'm going to come to him with the truth because I know at the end of the day the truth is what's going to set him Maybe free and heal him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, whether he decides to accept the truth or not, and that's where we have to stand on this, brother, uh, brethren, brothers and sisters of the Lord. We need to stand on the fact that this is true. So if you're out there and you're stuck on Joyce Meyer and you're stuck on these women preachers, I, I, I really encourage you to stop watching them because in reality you're disobeying God when you are watching them. Yeah, they're not so, called. They shouldn't be listening. Right. I, I, here's the verses if you want them for yourself. Genesis 3.16, 1 Timothy 2.12, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, among others. And here's the thing too, if we, if we can't stand for if we can't stand for uh, the word of God and what it says and the doctrines uh, of the Bible, uh, then if we can't stand for this little issue, we're not going to be able to stand for a lot. Then you know what I mean? And it's not it, not, it doesn't it's not just uh, when it comes to the role of men and women in uh, um, in the body of Christ as children of God, whether it's salvation, whether it's um, how we assemble, whatever it is. Everything that we do in our mind should be with God's word. You know what I mean? That's and, our measuring stick. Right. And if you, you know, if you just apply the word of God, if you just preach what it says, I told somebody, uh, it might have been you, Pastor, but here, here at church, we don't need no famous circus band. We don't need all, all, all this stuff. All we need is the word of God to be exactly. preached and... God will do the rest. I mean, you know, so. That's what will change America. And that's what will change lives. And souls will be saved when the word of God is being preached. Because I tell you, you get behind a pulpit and you have a man who decides to put him, humble himself and put him behind the cross of Jesus Christ and count himself as nothing and just preach the word of God, you'll see a lot of things happen. So, um, folks, I, I really hope this really helped you. Also, um, if you could, please like our Facebook. Um, this is the Living for Christ, like I said, a ministry of Turner Street Baptist Church. Um, like this video, share it as well, um, because it helps get the message out. Um, also, um, our main page, uh, Turner Street Baptist Church in Maryville, Tennessee. Um, like uh, that page as well if you can share it and also go to our YouTube page our YouTube page is found on Turner Street Baptist Church Facebook page um, there's a uh, tab on there that says watch video click it it goes to our YouTube channel we have uh, a bunch of sermons that you can listen to and uh, we we hope that uh, when you listen to them that uh, it will grow you closer to know the Lord and into his image 
And uh, before we go, brother, I would really appreciate if you would share the gospel message. And, uh, yeah. I don't have anything written down, but I'll, I'll make it clear that the Bible says we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. Now, that's Romans 3.23. That word come short means that we miss the mark. The word sin itself there means we miss the mark. And uh, to get into heaven, you have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We've all missed the mark. Uh, one of my favorite illustrations of that is, uh, say you get three people and you give them all a dart. You say, I want you to throw that dart and hit the bullseye. And uh, the first person throws their dart and it hits the wall. It misses the dartboard. And then the second one throws their dart and it hits the very edge right inside the outside ring of the dartboard. Then the third person throws it, and it hits just outside of the metal ring around the bullseye. Uh, I, I could say to those three, uh, which one of you did what I said and hit the bullseye? Well, the guy that hit right, in, right next to the bullseye said, well, I got the closest. But they all missed it. So and that's the way it is. Uh, some of us have lived better than others. Some of us have sinned less than others. But we all miss the standard, the mark that God has set to get into heaven. Um. So since we've missed the mark, there's a penalty that comes with that. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Um, when I think of wages, I think of a paycheck. If I work all week, at the end of the week, I, I go to the office to get my check. That's my wages. That's what I've earned. I put in the hours. My wages is to get what I earned. But likewise, our whole life we've sinned. Uh, we've, we've sinned after sin after sin. And our wages for that sin is death. And it doesn't say we have to send so many hours to get a paycheck or, or work so many hours to get a paycheck. But since we've sinned, if it would just be one sin, we still have wages. And the wages for one sin is death as well as the wages of a million sins is death. We've all missed the mark. So that leaves us in a bad spot. Uh, so I'm glad that what it says in Romans chapter 10. It says if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in the heart that God hath raised from the dead, we shall be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we must believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins as our sacrifice and that he rose again from the dead and simply ask him with a sincere heart to save us, and he will. And that's really the gospel. It's not what we have done, but what he did 2,000 years ago. Putting our confidence in that. It's not some little magical prayer we say that saves us. It's us putting our confidence in him and asking us to save him. So if you want to be saved and uh, you want more information on this, uh, send us a message. We'll be more than happy uh, to explain it better to you. God bless. Yes, amen. So uh, before we go, we're going to have a word of prayer. And uh, again, I just want to add what Pastor said. If if, if you heard that message, you heard the gospel, um, and uh, you called upon the name of Jesus. It, it may not be now. I encourage you now. Because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Definitely wouldn't wait five minutes. or uh, That's what Satan wants to do. He wants you to wait. Uh, just wait and wait and wait. Uh, but my friend, you don't know when you, you'll die. And, and God loves you. He doesn't want to see you be separated from him. Amen. He wants you to live and abide with him forever. But you have to come through one door. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way but through his son. And uh, I just want to add, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that for whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My friend, if you can get a grip of just how much God loves you, just that he went to that cross and he hung up on that, that tree there, and he hung, up, he hung on there for you. He became a curse for you, and he died for you, and he rose again from the grave for you. And that if you'd put your faith and, and, and believe on him, that he did that for you, God will save you. He'll save you. And he's just a call away. So if you've done that, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you and love to um, get to know you more. So if we can, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you, God. I just pray and I just ask you, Father, Lord, that God, that you, you touch those who heard this message tonight, Lord, that heard this podcast, Father. Lord, help us to understand this issue with with women preachers, Lord. God, we want to believe what you want. We want to believe what you say. 
We want to believe what you believe. And I, I, and, and I know from your word, God, and what it says, Lord, that this whole thing about women preachers is just false, Lord. And, Lord, I just ask you, if there's someone out there struggling with this issue, Lord, that you set them free from it, that you help them, Lord, that they'll be able to live uh, in freedom in you and they'll be able to live in obedience to you. And, uh, Father, I just pray, God, that uh, especially towards the end when we share the gospel message, Lord God, that, that if there be anyone that hears this message, Lord, that they'll call upon your Son. And, Father, we just ask of you in these things, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.